Hi, everyone. I'm here with David Wright. Thanks for being here, David. Thanks for having me, Steve. So David is at our studio at uh, Fitness for 10 in Carson City, Nevada, where he is a personal trainer. And uh, today we're going to talk about avoiding injuries, how to avoid injuries, how to deal with injuries. Um, so what are your first thoughts on that, David? So, I mean, the first thoughts that come to my mind, Steve, is, you know, how easily it is that people can get injured, uh, you know, throughout various places, whether it be at home, at work, or, you know, unfortunately, but it is reality in the gym. Um, and, you know, I, I bring myself to the forefront of my mind here because um, I have had injuries in the gym prior to being a personal trainer, and um, they can be really difficult to um, kind of recover from, you know, because a lot of times, especially if you're like me, you want to get right back in the gym and keep working out, etc. But you really got to <laughs> allow them to rest. But, um, you know, one of the things that comes to my mind is, you know, you always want to make sure, you know, when you come into the gym, uh, any gym, whether it's our fitness for 10 here or any of the other gyms out there is you want to know for sure, you know, that you have the right form that you're utilizing the right motions, because that's the easiest way uh, to get injured in any fitness you know, facility is, you know, performing an exercise, you know, especially sometimes when it's far too heavy or it's just not the right form, whether it's heavy or light, and, you know, it leaves you susceptible to injury. So the first thing comes to my mind is, well, really, in this instance, uh, you know, a personal trainer like myself to really give you those, you know, guidelines and, and show you and and kind of analyze your, your form as you do exercise. So that way you have less risk of any kind of injury to yourself. And okay, th this is a, a, a huge one for me because I've been in the gym since I was a teenager. If you guys watch the channel, you know, but I think a lot of uh, the subscribers and people that watch our videos on this channel are over 50, 60, 70. Um, and it's really, really important and beneficial to avoid injury because if you get injured and you're in your sixties and let's say you tear a bicep, that's going to put you out of commission for, I don't know how many months, you know, the surgery to repair it, you're, and in, in those months while you're rehabbing, your whole upper body is deteriorating. Same thing if you get a serious injury in your lower body. So here's what I do to make sure, knock on wood, I avoid injury. I lower my intensity level. It's worth it to me not to push, push, push with that high intensity level to get more results faster um, so I lower my intensity level. What do I mean by that? I never do an exercise to failure. N nothing. I don't do, um, bench press to failure. I don't do anything to failure. I don't even do bicep curls or tricep push downs to failure. It, that's a smaller muscle and it's easier to do that. I don't do it on machines. I don't do it on free weights, a little safer on machines. So what I do to make up for that is I increase my volume. Instead of maybe doing three sets and two of them are to failure where I can't do anymore, I'll do twice as many sets. And so I'm fatiguing and I'm working the muscle just as much. It just, I took longer to do it with a lower intensity level. That's how I do it. Um, that way I'm not taxing my muscle or my joint or my tendons to a hundred percent. And that's helped me pretty much avoid injury uh, as I'm lifting in my sixties. Right. And there's a lot of, uh, a lot of people who don't really know uh, things like that. And that's one of the things, Steve, that I, I would agree with you. There's, a lot of people, whether it be this gym or other gyms, you know, there's there's people out there that lift all sorts of crazy amounts of weight. But to your point, um, when 
when you get older, and even me, I'm in my 40s, you know, it's not the same as if I was in my 20s and, you know, trying to push all that weight and everything. Now, granted, I'm a competitor, you know, I'm in contest prep right now. So there's, there's a lot going on in terms of, yeah, there's some intense workouts, but there's not so intense. I, I guess the best way for me to put it is when I'm here working out in the gym or at any gym, I'm not pushing myself to the point where, as an example, that I need a spotter um, for the bench press. Because I know that number one, right now is not a good time for me to be trying to, you know, set personal records and, and things like that for myself. What it's about is, you know, getting that muscle to continue to develop, but also to prevent injury, but also to be able to intensely do that workout on my own. So whether that's a lighter weight, so I'm not needing any kind of spotter and doing more reps, you know, more sets, whatever the case might be, that's also what I'm doing right now. Um, but I definitely would agree with, you know, some folks, you know, whether it's my age or, you know, 50s, 60s, 70s, to your point, you know, that's not the time to really have your muscles be going to failure because there's a lot of other factors that, you know, health reasons and just deterioration in general of muscles, tendons, all of those things. So we want to preserve, you know, all of those areas. And, and one of the ways to do that is to really work out in a responsible way so that way you don't, you know, run that much greater risk of, you know, tears and dislocations and all those different things that can happen very easily, actually, even at 40, heck at 30, these things can happen at any time, I guess. But if you're lifting too heavy, you're going too intensely, just because that's what you do, you're going to run that risk of injury. So, you know, I always let my clients know when we're training together, or whether it's an intro here at the gym, whatever the case might be, it's, you know, let's lift, even if they say, hey, I can lift, uh, you know, more weight than this. Okay, well, let's do this first. Let me see your form. Let me see how you do it. I'll show you exactly how I'd like you to do it. So you're doing it safely. All of those things, um, rather than starting out with, oh, you can lift, you know, a 200 pound bench press. All right, let's throw the weight on there and see how you can do. Absolutely not. Um, let's see what your form looks like. And let's give you there are some exercises, for instance, bench presses, where there's so many different variations that you can do, where maybe they're not as heavy, but boy, do they feel like, you know, you're, you're working them out really, really heavy, but you're not, and it's a lot safer, but you still get that, that good workout, not to failure per se, but, you know, at the end of those couple of sets, however many you're doing, man, you feel like you probably went to failure, but you did it in a responsible way that you're going, man, I got a great workout in my chest today, but I didn't have to do a 250 pound bench press, you know? Um, so there's a lot of different ways and, and it is really important, especially as we age to make sure we're doing this responsibly, because again, injuries can take a lot longer um, to heal and cause other complications. I know that I tore a bicep in the gym many years ago and I was, you know, in my late thirties at that time. And so that took me probably three weeks at least to just be able to really move my arm to a point where I wasn't in immense pain um, because that's a huge thing. You know, I've got some herniated discs on my back, not gym related, but from a previous uh, you know, work that I did probably 15 years ago, don't have that pain anymore because I built up the muscle, but those are things that can so easily happen if we're not careful. Yeah, and there's a lot of very experienced lifters that uh, follow me and I follow back on that uh, are older, but very advanced lifters. <clears throat> and they have different philosophies, but they all have ways to prevent injuries and still make gains. For instance, me, I don't do three reps. Three reps would be mean I'm lifting too heavy. My reps are always between five and 15. Now, if my reps are at five, my intensity level is lower because proportionately the weight is heavier. So at five reps, um, my intensity level is a little lower. At 15 reps, my intensity level can be higher. Why? Because I'm fatiguing that muscle through all those reps to get to 15. So that's usually my rep range, five to 15. But you can also... Um, really fatigue the muscle without going to failure. You kind of mentioned that. 
you really can. Um, and, you know, a lot of I, I hear a lot of people responding to some of my videos and giving comments in there. Some guys will only use machines. They've been free weight people their whole life, very advanced lifters. Now they've moved to machines. It's almost like, but they're not going backwards. The reason behind that, that one guy said is he can elevate his intensity. He doesn't need a spotter. He's not going to drop a bar on his face um, because it's a selectorized machine and he can increase his intensity safer. Hey, that's a valid reason. That's how he does it. But he's conscious of being safe and his intensity level and he wants to keep it up. How does he do it? He, he does it on machines. You know, he's not going to go do that same intensity level on a squat or a bench. So there's different ways and deadlifts. I do deadlifts. A lot of advanced lifters will say, you know, you get over 50, 60, 70, trash the deadlifts. They're too dangerous. That's a legitimate, um, valid, opinion for a lot of people. I do them. I do them, but my intensity level is not super duper high. <clears throat> and my technique is pretty solid. So those deadlifts are preventing injury in my opinion, but there's a lot of other things that you can do if you want to, to strengthen all those same muscles that you're using when you do deadlifts. So I really appreciate a lot of the uh, more advanced lifters and the comments they make. And they always tell me why. And they're, they're always valid. But they have a strategy. All these advanced lifters, male and female, they have a strategy and a thought process to keep their body healthy. And that's what you got to do, especially as you're aging. Yeah, I, I agree. I mean, yeah, we each have our own kind of strategy. To your point, deadlifts are a great example. You know, you'll hear, you know, one side of it being, you know, don't do deadlifts, they're really dangerous, you know, they can cause injury, all of these things. But on the other side, I mean, that's completely valid. And, and you're absolutely right in terms of, you know, deadlifts, especially if, you know, people are lifting very heavy and all those types of things absolutely can cause catastrophic injury, honestly, if not done correctly, or just really overstraining those back muscles while and everything else involved. So, um, you know, one of the things that I'm doing now, and people would probably look at me really funny if they saw me here in the gym uh, doing it is, you know, deadlifts that are like 135, which if if anybody were to see me at the gym, they'd go, wow, what is that like a warm up set? No, it's not. It's not a warm up set. Can I lift more than that? Absolutely, I can. But right now where I'm at, as an example, you know, I'm doing deadlifts in a very specific way, number one, that they're safe, but number two, to work a very specific set of my back muscles. So I don't have to, you know, go up to, you know, 225, 275, all these different higher things. It's very specific and it's also targeting very specific back muscles. So if you see somebody big, small, muscular, not muscular in the gym and you're going, wow, you know, that person's doing some deadlifts, but they're, you know, not lifting very much. It's not the weight that actually matters in most of these cases. It's how your form is, how you, how your, you know, muscle memory is. Are you having that mind muscle connection? And that's a whole nother video. But in this case, to avoid injury, like for myself, because of the specific muscles that I'm targeting in my back, working with my coach, you know, what we're doing is, you know, it's like 135, 185 tops right now to target that very specific set. And so, I'll be doing probably four sets of 15 on these. Am I going to bring myself to failure on any of those? No, but I'm going to be bringing myself to fatigue definitely by that, you know, that fourth set is going to be really difficult because, you know, there's so much targeting. It's a very controlled. And so there are ways to, you know, do some of these exercises. And of course, barring any kind of injuries and impairments one might have that might prevent it. But other than that, I mean, you can, you can get into the gym, you can do these different exercises in a nice, safe way, or if you can't or don't want to, that's okay too. Like you said earlier, you pointed out a really good thing, which is you can do a lot of other things, uh, exercises instead of a deadlift or instead of a squat with a you know, barbell, there are other things. So don't let that get you down that maybe, you know, you do a squat with a barbell and maybe you have a shoulder issue or maybe your knees just kind of 
aren't what they used to be, that's okay. There's tons of different stuff that you can do to work those same muscles, build those same muscles or maintain what you've got, whatever your goal is. You don't have to do that. So it's not the end of the road. And when you do have an injury, you know, it's really important to know how to work around that injury. And also when it comes to the point where you can start strengthening that injured part, because as you and I know, Steve, that once you've injured, you know, any part, whether it's just an injury, a tear, a surgery, whatever, that part's always going to be weaker than the, you know, side, for instance, that maybe didn't have an injury, but we've got to still strengthen it. We've got to still get it moving. We've still got to, you know, keep that strength up. So there's ways to do that. Um, you know, even with my bicep tear, for instance, yeah, you know what, that kept me out of the gym for probably at least a week and a half, just because of the immobility of my arm, really. But then I went back, gosh, I did some different things with my legs. I, I did some other things that maybe didn't have a lot of weight attached. There's ways to, um, to kind of keep that momentum going, even if you do have an injury And the gym, honestly, is one of the best places to go once it's safe for you to go there if you have an injury, because then you can just keep those muscles from, you know, atrophying because, you know, you got your bicep that's not working out for you. And then we just don't work anything else out. Well, all of that starts to kind of go down, go down and we're restarting. So it's always a good place. And there's a lot of good people here that, that can, you know, help you out, especially trainers, but even other members of the gym, um, you know, that, you know, have some different techniques. So it's always good to be here. Yeah. You made a couple good points. Um, and I, I don't do heavy deadlifts either. You know, I'm in that same low range and I don't, I never do even 15 reps when I'm doing deadlifts, but I do both types. I do sumo deadlifts and conventional deadlifts, uh, which are two different lifts. But if I was, if I could only pick one, if there was some rule that said you could only do one exercise, that would be it. It would be deadlifts. I mean, that's not ideal, but if they said you can only go in the gym and do one thing, that would be it. And the other really good point that you made was that do what you can do. If you have an upper body injury, you can still usually work your lower body and vice versa. Um, so just stay in there, do what you can do and get that injury healed. So, David, um, if people want to follow you on social media, how do they do that? So they can follow me on social media, on Instagram. I have my uh, fitness journey page, talks about my transformation, my show prep right now, where I'm at with all of that, um, on Instagram at David Wright underscore fitness, and then a personal training page, boot camps, things like that, at Wright Fitness Training. All right. 